Hello everybody, this is Jeremy Tay within the DAW. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the M Sound Factory's newest addition to their sample library, or their instrument library technically, the Monastery Grand Piano. Now, I was contacted by United Plugins and asked if I wanted to take a look at the new Monastery Grand add-on, which is 100% free for anyone who owns M Sound Factory. And uh, they sent me a license to M Sound Factory and I downloaded the Monastery Grand to take a look. Now, this video is going to be extremely quick. I'm not really going to be diving super deep into what M Sound Factory can do, and that's only because that would take like a 30 minute video. This thing is extremely powerful. And to give you a very quick little overview, uh, let me just show you what I mean. If I select something like a monophonic sound, I click on it and load it up and play some music. That's a monophonic synth. We have the generator, the effects section, and the global section. But what's really cool is you can hit edit. And you can actually make this be whatever you want. Uh, this can have generators, filters, uh, building blocks, modulation effects, and nonlinear effects just in the generator section. The global section can actually be an envelope shaper that you want it to have. Uh, you have pitch shift controls, pretty much all the controls you want. And then the effects section has multiple different setups that you can actually just click on and add whatever type of effect you want. Now, there are two versions of this plugin when you get a copy of it, the normal stereo version and the six output version. So the stereo version has two outs and the six output version has six different outputs. So you can technically have six different instruments, each outputting to a different output, which is extremely cool. Another thing that's really cool is that this has real multi-core support, which is really cool because audio processes actually are done in serial most of the time. So let's say I'm mixing a vocal track and I have a compressor, an EQ, a saturation plugin, another compressor, and then maybe a de at the end. That is actually being processed in serial, as in one after another, which has to be done in a single core process. While instruments don't need to do this at all because it's an instrument. It's not an actual real thing being played back. It's samples being taken from somewhere else or it's sounds being generated from somewhere else. So it's really cool that this plugin has dedicated multi-core support, which makes this very, very CPU efficient. Even if it hits high CPU loads, because it's able to spread it out on a multi-core basis, you actually get a lower hit in the long run. Now, if you're using a modern AMD CPU on your computer, you will have a ton of cores. I think Threadrippers have like 32 or 64 cores. So this is perfect for something like that. I'm on an Intel uh, 9900K i9 processor with eight cores, and this is actually doing barely anything to my CPU. So really quickly, I wanna just also show you that you can do other stuff. Let's try maybe some drums. Right, sounds kind of crazy. Let's try something else like a cinematic percussion. That sounds pretty cool. You can obviously go in here and edit it, which means that this has a lot of capabilities. And because this has the ability to have other people make libraries for this, we can do something like a acoustic library, like the Monastery Grand. Now there's two different types of this. There's the creative version, which allows you to have a lot of tonal control. You have stuff like effects, global routing, tonal noise, resonators, and a bunch of other things. And let me show you what those look like. You have stuff like filters, anatomy, tone, harmonies, and it even allows you to uh, have soft or hard notes, the lid open, closed, or just halfway open. Let's try doing some weird filtering stuff. And I'm literally just doing some random stuff right here. We'll add some resonators, and this is going to sound absolutely horrible. Right? Really, really bad. So now I want to load up the normal Monastery Grand. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this doesn't have all that options. Even though you can edit them and add those options in if you want. But this is just the normal plugin. Check out how this sounds. That sounds really good. Now, 
I find that there's some issues with it that I don't like. The release of the notes is way too short. So let's increase that. And let's increase it a little bit more with the high key release. Pretty good. Let's maybe increase the size and ambience. And let's change microphones. Pretty good. Let's actually just A, B all the different mics really quickly. I'm hearing subtle differences. It's not a huge difference, but I feel like this might be a cool blend to do something like this. And then we'll add some attack by adding some color, which is soft or hard. And then we can change the lid. Cool. Now, in the effects section, we have reverb, delay, compressors, enhancers. But if we edit this, we can actually add more. So we can make this do whatever we want. And we can actually even edit the parameters of the reverb. As you see, pretty much everything is editable. So it's pretty crazy. Now, let's compare this to something else that has a lot of other instruments in it. And I'm not going to be throwing contact in here because contact is a dedicated sample library player, whereas this is a dedicated generator. So you can have samples in here, but you could also just generate sounds, whereas contact doesn't really do that unless you have a sample library doing it. So let's just take a look at expand Two. This is an amazing plugin that I use all the time. This is a stock plugin in Pro Tools. I actually paid for this so I could have it outside of Pro Tools. And let's just listen to the normal grand piano that this has. That sounds good, but it also kind of has this old sound to it. And I mean, it just sounds like older samples being played back. There's not a lot of variation or deviation that can be had. Whereas this... I can make it sound old. Or I can make it sound new. And if I really want to go crazy, even though this is someone else's third-party library, I can edit this library. So you could technically maybe purchase a library that someone makes later on down the road. If you like it, you can change it and do whatever you want. It's kind of like what ToonTrack does with their like Easy Mix or with their uh, Easy Drummers and stuff like that. Only you can actually edit it after you get the new library or the new sample pack or the new whatever. It's really cool and really flexible. Anyway, I think that's about it for this video. I just wanted to take a look at this and see the sound quality. Personally, I really like the way that Monastery Grand sounds. I'm planning on maybe having Kevin do a video on the M Sound Factory if you guys want, or maybe even uh, one of the other people that we have on the channel, because I think this is something that people who enjoy synthesizers and tweaking stuff is really gonna enjoy. Anyway, that's it for this video. This is Jeremy Toth in the DAW. I will see you guys next time. Bye.